The First World War is often viewed as an imperialist war. The clashing of empires vying to be the most dominant force in Europe. And since at that time the majority of European countries were ruled by monarchs, blame for the conflict and subsequent slaughter has often been laid at the feet of kings and emperors. In this series of videos I contend that this was far from the truth. Not one of the monarchs wanted war, and to the last minute they were trying desperately to find ways of preventing such a catastrophe. Ultimately, they became the scapegoats for someone else's crime. By 1914, Queen Victoria's grandchildren included Kaiser Wilhelm of Germany, Tsarina Alexandra of Russia, King George of Britain, Queen Maud of Norway, Queen Sophie of Greece, Queen Victoria Eugenie of Spain, and the Crown Princesses of Romania and Sweden. King George of Britain was a first cousin of the Kaiser, and also a first cousin of both the Tsar and the Tsarina. And these rulers were not only cousins but friends. They attended the same weddings and funerals, they holidayed together, exchanged gifts, and paid frequent informal visits to each other's homes. All in all, the so-called great powers of Germany, Russia, and Britain were ostensibly ruled by one large, extended, but united family. By 1914 too, however, a series of political alliances had divided Europe into two distinct camps. The Entente of Russia, Britain and France had left the Kaiser in a difficult position. For over forty years the French had been seeking a means to regain the provinces of Alsace-Lorraine, which the Germans had seized in the Franco-Prussian War of 1870. And now, with a Franco-Russian alliance, Germany ran the risk of encirclement, being attacked by Russia from the east, and France from the West. In response, the Germans had formed an alliance with Italy and with Austria-Hungary, thereby creating a sort of fortress of the Central Powers, which would, it was hoped, be strong enough to withstand any attack. But there were problems with this alliance. The old Austro-Hungarian Empire, ruled by the aged Franz Joseph, was filled with so many different ethnic groups, many of whom were seeking independence, that the empire was basically crumbling. Germany, on the other hand, was in the ascendancy. For forty years, since the unification of 1871, the country had been at peace. Industry was thriving, the nation was prospering, and throughout the Kaiser's twenty-six-year reign, many programs had been established to help workers, the sick, and the unemployed. The Kaiser's Germany was vibrant and young, but shackled to an alliance with a decaying empire. Unsurprisingly, not only for the sake of his country, but also for his belief in the strength of family ties, Kaiser Wilhelm repeatedly reassured his cousins in Britain and Russia of his goodwill, and he was eager to maintain their friendship. In Russia, too, Tsar Nicholas was also eager to remain on friendly terms with the Kaiser. His army was still recovering from a disastrous war with Japan and was not prepared for further conflict. Moreover, Nicholas II was a peace-loving and pious man who had no desire for war. The two men could not have been more different. The Kaiser, flamboyant, erratic and prone to impetuous outbursts, and the Tsar, who would have preferred to retire to a country estate with his family than to rule so vast a nation. But both were autocrats, who ostensibly made all the decisions for the government of their countries. If neither of these two men wanted war, how did they become embroiled in so terrible a conflict that would lead to the death of millions of people throughout the world, and also to the destruction of their own monarchies? Who had anything to gain from their downfall? and what really led to one of the bloodiest conflicts the world has ever known.